Hey y'all, so for today, I want to elaborate on my Friday video where I talked about how I found a higher power, came to believe in a higher power. I also did another video on my channel uh, months ago um, that I also did about this topic and I'm also gonna link that as well below in the description box. And today I just wanted to kind of give you all a more in-depth story of how I came to believe in something bigger than myself. You could call it God, higher power, whatever you want to call it. But I just want to kind of share my story around it. So I grew up as a preacher's kid. My dad was a Methodist minister in the South. So I grew up in a Southern Christian household. And growing up, I saw a lot of things in the church. I definitely experienced the politics of the church and how people with money would, you know, have power in the church to make more decisions. And, you know, the experience that my dad would have with people in the church and if they didn't get their way how it would affect my dad's job so i got to see so many amazing people in the church but i also experienced a lot of people that i found to be very hypocritical as well and on top of that learning too that even the spiritual leaders in and of themselves are human and my dad struggled with his uh drinking my dad's a recovering alcoholic and I have a family where we all come from our own issues around addiction and, and struggles. So it's something that's, you know, coming from this family that had this title to it of being like the preacher's family. And then obviously having our own issues. It was really difficult growing up. And also seeing my dad, who was the spiritual leader, get up and preach at the pulpit about God and love. But then also have his own struggles and and seeing him struggle with his temper and things like that i found it really confusing growing up but i remember loving going to church with my dad i would always go to church with my dad before the before everybody else got there and i would make the coffee for the old people and and it was just a quiet time in the church and i just remember loving it i remember loving going to church and um just the time of church, you know, all the stuff aside, but like going and having that experience every Sunday was something I, I enjoyed. And no matter everything that went on in my life, I always had the belief that there was something bigger than myself. And that idea of something bigger than myself, even then, you know, I don't know if I was like, oh, this is what God is and this is what Jesus is. Like I understood that there are all those teachings but I also had this deep feeling inside of it that there was just something more going on. That there was something bigger going on than just the text of the Bible and just um, the story of Jesus and, and the nativity and his crucifixion. But always having this deep understanding that I was going to grow into a deeper understanding of connection with the world and the energy that underlies everything in the world. And I just always carried that with me. And, you know, I struggled with all my eating disorders and, and I remember being, you know, morbidly obese and feeling like, well, why would God let me go through that and all those experiences. And I never really had like a real spiritual mentor because my dad was my the minister, my dad was the youth group leader. Um, we lived in small churches, you know, I got to see where that whole idea of, you know, if you're a spiritual person then you don't have a lot of money. So I could see where being a minister's family, you know, we struggled with finances at times. And so it really cut into my belief system around God and finances and abundance and success and a lot of things that I've had to dismantle over time. And what I came to the experience I came to have when I went to college was my boss was this woman named Dolores and everybody called her Miss D and she was my boss when I worked at the financial aid office and she was also my first very true spiritual mentor. She was very religious, very Christian. Um, I mean, she would be sitting there, you know, kind of mentoring me and, and ministering to me and then she would just break out into tongues. In, in the office, in the financial aid office of the school. And um, even though she had this very, you know, more fundamental view of God and Jesus, I could really hear her message. I really heard that message of trusting in a power greater than yourself, trusting in God, trusting in the process, 
um, being patient to see God's will come through in your life. And, and I just always found that love and compassion from her. And it always meant so much to me. And I, I had that mentorship for four years in college when I was in the throes of my eating disorder. I had no idea that the words that she was teaching to me were gonna have such an impact on me later on. And when I moved out to LA after college and I hit my bottom, and in meantime, you know, I would try to read the Bible or whatever. I, I, I didn't understand the concepts of prayer and meditation. It just never occurred to me. And then when I moved out to LA and I hit my bottom and I started in recovery, I really had to see how I, when I was trying to run my life, it was completely chaotic and completely unmanageable. And how I was trying to control my eating disorder, I was trying to control my career, I was trying to control people, I was, I was trying to control everything. I used to look at people who were religious and I had a lot of judgment on them because all I knew of people who were religious was that they were hypocritical. So I would always say, well, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. And then when I really started to work on my recovery, you know, the first thing that's so important when you're dealing with addiction or, or anything, in my experience, some people don't attribute to this, but for me, my experience was that I needed a power greater than myself. I needed to have something that I could turn to that was outside of me because my head was causing all the problems to begin with. The compulsive eating, you know, the trying to control it, the exercise bulimia, the porn addiction. And I needed something that I could look to that was outside of myself for the answers. And sometimes the idea of having something outside of myself just meant that let me turn to something that's not me. And in that, maybe rest in that space and maybe allow the answers to come to me rather than trying to control and fix and find all the answers. And when I did that, I still was super resistant to like trusting in this thing. Like what is this thing that we're gonna trust in? I didn't have a relationship with God. You know, I, all I, I, I always had an idea of God, but I never had a relationship with God. And I had this mentor, you know, after, you know, when I got into recovery, the spiritual mentor really was guiding me on, on how to have a relationship with God. And when I say God, like it doesn't mean like the God of the Bible. It means a higher power, something bigger than yourself. It means it's it's not gendered, you know, it's not a male nor female, you know, it's it's not just Jesus or Yahweh or whatever it is. It's it's something bigger than myself that I can connect with, that I am in partnership with in doing my life. And it took me a long time to come to that realization to be even able to articulate what a higher power is to me. And one of the first things that my mentor had me do was define my own conception of God. And some of the things that he suggested that I were able to adopt was this idea of something that, that is all loving, that is not judgmental nor punishing. And that was really important for me because I used to think I was punished all the time by this God or that fear of if I don't live life a certain way that I'm going to go to hell. And the reality is what I've come to now is that hell is the absence of God and real hell can be experienced on earth. And it's when I choose not to be present with myself or with, with um, other people or with my higher power. I believe that is hell on earth. And that in and of itself relief that in of itself released a lot of stress around trying to be perfect for God. Because the whole idea of trying to get into heaven was such a stress, I think, for a lot of fundamental Christians and for myself, and a lot of fear. And I don't believe that God is fear either. And so once I really wrote down my conception of God, you know, my spiritual mentor started to ask me like, well, what are your daily practices? And I was like, I'm not religious. Like, I'm not religious. I don't have any daily practices. Um, he goes, well, in the word spiritual is the word ritual. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He goes, in finding our practices and in coming to have a relationship with something bigger than ourselves, it's okay to find ritualistic practices that give you time to sit, to reflect, to get yourself present with whatever is going on in your life. And so I started to see where 
you know, why I shunned religiosity, I found that spirituality started to take on a new meaning and that spirituality was very much something that had to involve action. It had to involve me doing something to participate in this relationship with something bigger than myself. And so I started to practice reading spiritual books and I read a lot of spiritual books just so that I could start to redefine my concept of God. I think that was really important was I had to really start educating myself on what did I want you know, my spiritual life to be? What did I want it to look like? And so I read Christian books, I read other, other literature, I read all sorts of books about you know, spirituality, the power of now, which is a popular one, you know, anything that could help me formulate how I wanted to live a spiritual life. And I also learned that I get to take what I like and leave the rest that, you know, no one has a monopoly on God. And God is so much bigger than one spiritual text or one definition or one way of looking at things. And over time, I found that as I was recovering from my eating disorder, I got to see how this power greater than myself showed up in my life. I had more inspirational thoughts about how to behave towards people. I became less fearful of things. Um, there's this great saying, would you rather be right or be happy? And I feel like that's so directly tied to my spiritual life. Because I believe that my, I believe that, that ego deflation is directly proportional to my willingness to believe in something bigger than myself. And there's a lot less anger and stress in the world when we have that ego deflation. Because then you know what? Everyone has their own experience with their own higher power and they're on their own path. Where when I have to be right, it's that idea that I have to make someone believe how I believe. And it, it doesn't need to be that way. And the more I let other people have the experience in life that they need to have, I feel more inspired to let myself have my own experience that I'm having with 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 God and, and with others. I also have really found that that my relationship with God is also deepened when I work on my relationship with myself because then I really know what it is that I am bringing to my relationship with God. And I think that I've really let go of rules. Like they, you know, we grow up with that whole idea of like, oh, don't say the Lord's name in vain and 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 all those things where, you know what, if we're in a relationship with God, then we get to be mad. You know, I remember saying, you know, God, like I you know, you're really fucking with me right now. Like you're really pissing me off. I really don't like this. Like I'm not I don't like what's going on in life. I don't like what's going on in the world. Or, you know, God, why would you do this to me? And the thing is, I can choose, if I choose to keep in dialogue with something bigger than myself, then I still have connection to it. Where if I completely shut it out, then there's nothing that, that that's, there's no dialogue happening. It's, it's an ended relationship. I am not making this video to convince anyone to have a spiritual life. My hope with this video is to express to you that it is worth exploring something that can bring you peace that is bigger than just your own head. And I know people who are atheists who actually, in my opinion, they would not necessarily say that they have a spiritual life, but I have met some atheists who have a much more thriving spiritual presence than some people who claim to be spiritual because they've learned to trust in their instincts. They've learned to sit in guidance with something that they're connected to that guides them in ways in a way to live life, whether it's in how they choose to treat people or it's in their business life or their relationship life. And I've even found a lot of spiritual guidance from people who say they're not spiritual, but I believe they're very spiritual. So I would just encourage you to let go of labels and to allow yourself to let your life be your spiritual experience. I would encourage you to wear life like a loose garment so that you can stop and see the bigger picture of what's going on. And when I can stop and see the bigger picture of what's going on, 
I can see where like, oh, I'm learning from this experience. Oh, something in the universe put this in my life and it's informing this other thing right down the road. So in the comments below, feel free to ask me any questions, but also I'd love to know your own experience with a higher power. You know, what is your concept of God and what does that look like for you in your life? I believe it's 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 a really awesome thing that we get to experience. And if you're not there yet, you know, what's holding you back? Just whatever you want to write about in the comments section, I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.